tiger nets have been used to catch carp now for way over 30 years. They were one of the early particles out there and what a phenomenal bait it has proved to be. Kev, why are tiger nets so good for carp? I think the simple answer to that, Brian, is the fact that carp absolutely love them. I've caught loads of carp on them, I'm sure you have as well. Uh, I just think when the carp get on them and start feeding, they love the crunch factor. They, they pass them to the back of their throats, they crunch them all up and digest them, releasing all of the goodness out of the tiger nuts. They naturally leak off a lot of real sugary, sweet yeah. scent, and the carp just love them. So it's like a taste and an experience of the crunch all in one. Okay. There, there's the tigers in a dehydrated form. Um, no moisture in them at all. All that, uh, all that moisture has been taken away. So they're like in a dormant form there. Um, no good for fishing in when they're like that. Here we've got some tiger nuts that we've already cooked up and soaked up and they're ready to go. So quite a difference. You know, they, they've blown out. Um, you can now actually smell the tigers themselves because they have rehydrated. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to get rid of all this rubbish, we're going to get the pan out, we're going to get the dry tigers out, and we're going to show you just how simple it is to cook one of these fantastic carpets. Okay, so here you go. Here's our two kilo of dry tigers, still dehydrated, straight off the shelf. Um, what we're going to do first of all is obviously open the bag. Now, the measurements of tigers very, very, very simple. All we're going to do is get the pan, that's the pan we're going to soak it and cook it in, so we're going to use the same pan. So, first of all, just whatever measure you use, just put one measure of tigers into the pan. From there, we want two measures of water, so the same measure into a bucket of water. One in there, two measures, and then two measures of water. And then all we're going to do now is we're going to leave these tigers soaking so that they can draw that water in and rehydrate for between 18 and 24 hours. 24 hours is certainly a lot easier because you know it's exactly the same time the next day then. 18 hours is plenty long enough. Um, so whatever suits you. Some people soak them for three and four days. I don't think that's an advantage at all. You know, once they've been soaking for 18 to 24 hours, they are ready to get cooked. And I think that's the time you want to get back on the pan and go ahead with that. So we're going to leave them here. We're going to shoot off and we'll be back 24 hours time. Okay, 24 hours later, we're back here. We've taken our soaked tigers. If you remember, we took two parts water, one part tiger nuts, we put them in the pan and we've left them soaking in there for 24 hours. We've now come back and we've got a normal uh, fishing type cooker with a gas bottle. We put them on top of there, we brought it up to boiling point and we, we're just coming to the end of the boil now. They've been simmering probably for about 23, 24 minutes now. I'm going to give them a little bit longer, anywhere between 20 minutes and half an hour and they're finished. And once they're finely cooked and finished, just leave them on the side to cool off, and then you can do what we're gonna do with them next. So, we're gonna go away now, uh, take these away, cool them down a bit, and then we're gonna show you all Kev's top edges with tigers. Okay, so here we are. We've cooked our tigers, we've let them cool down, and we've transferred them into our bait bucket here. And there you see, those tigers are cooked absolutely beautiful. If you bite through one, you can see they're cooked right the way through. They're still hard, they're still going to be crunchy when you bite into them, and they're never going to go really, really soft, but they are perfect for using. So at this stage, what I would do, um, I would take the liquid away, I'd keep the liquid, liquid for later on, because I love using that liquid in my sloppy spot mixes, rather than just using ordinary lake water. You do it different, don't you? I certainly do. I like to keep the liquid in the tiger nuts. Um, I always transfer the tiger nuts into a nice clean bucket. You don't want a dirty bucket because the bacteria will cause mould to grow. But if you, put it, point, if you put it in a clean bucket, I like to leave them in the juice and keep them in a cool place, whether it's in the garage, ideally in the fridge, and they will last for a long, long time. Superb. So there you go. Don't use a mouldy bucket, that's a brilliant tip there because it does take your bait off and it will taint it. So, so there you go, perfectly cooked tigers. 
very, very simple to do. Just soak them 24 hours, boil them 20 minutes, half an hour, they're ready. Now, if you want to go a little bit further than that, um, I think one of the best additives you can possibly get for tigers is this little baby, beetling. One of the sweetest liquid we sell and absolutely perfect for matching up with tigers. And what I do with tigers, if I want to flavour them, I take between three and five mil of betalin, and for every dry kilo I put into the soak, I add that betalin in there and give it a stir around. I then cook them as normal as we've just shown you, and then I take the same amount of betalin again and put that into the water and mix that in as well. And what that's doing, it's giving a light taste of beetle into the tigers. It's making them lightly sweet so that when the carp come in on the, in your swim and they start eating those tigers, they're always chasing that sugar rush. They can't quite get enough of the sugar, so it makes them eat slightly more, slightly more, slightly more, mm. and then bang, Kev's massive edge with his hook baits then comes into being. So Kev, tell us about your hook baits. First of all, once we've cooked the tiger nuts and they've cooled down, I go through the tiger nuts and I'm actually quite particular about the ones I pick out. I get the slightly bigger ones that are perfectly round okay. and I put them into an empty pot and I gather all my hook baits up. When I've filled up a pot, I then pour enough beetling into the pot to cover the hook baits. Now, that's twofold really. First of all, the beetling acts as a preservative yeah. so that your hook baits are never ever going to go off. Secondly, obviously the beetling gives them a massive boost of attraction. We've already put some into the tiger nuts, so the carp are looking for the beetling, and your hook bait is now completely soaked and is the most concentrated bait out there, so that is the one that the fish are going to be homing into. Okay, so we've got that perfect scenario where what we're always looking for is to get a hook bait to be the most wanted thing that we want to get the carp to pick up. And by doing this with the beetle in, that suddenly is a beacon out there that that is the sugar rush they're looking for. And they just come in and bang, they nail these rigs once they're soaked up in that. So a huge edge on that, brilliant thing to do with your tigers. Plus, obviously, chuck them in your bag, leave them there. You've got them in a whole year. And if you see how many hook baits are in there, if that was a pop of pop-ups, that's probably going to be about 10 quid or 15 quid worth of pop-ups in there. So financially stable as well to do that. Um, that's about as simple as it is to cook a tiger up. Um, we've shown you it's, it's very, very basic to do. Just add your water to your tigers, leave them for 24 hours, boil them for half an hour, they're ready to go. They are perfectly safe for use. You know, you can flavour them as we've shown you. Uh, and what we're going to do now, we're going to pass over to Kev, and Kev is going to show you his perfect rig for catching carp on tigers. Now I've caught absolutely loads of fish on tiger nuts and this is my favourite rig. Basically what I have done, I have taken a nut drill and just drilled through the centre of the tiger nut, which I've taken out of my pot of pre-soaked tiger nuts and just inserted a little bit of cork, pushed it into the bore and just trimmed off the rest of the cork. The next thing I've done is now that is obviously going to pop up, so I've just put a little bit of putty below the hook. I fish it on a semi-stiff coated braid, which is stripped back. The last two inches is stripped back. So basically, once you've cast it out, it's nicely balanced and it just slowly sinks down. So the putty hits the deck, the hook sits off the bottom, and the tiger nut is nice and wafty and just sits just off the bottom, clear of any debris. Now that's my favourite tiger nut rig. I've caught loads of carp on it. We've showed you how to prepare tiger nuts. Why not give it a go for yourself? Mm -hmm.